Jizan is the regional capital of the Southern Red Sea Coastal Plain, or Tihama, of Saudi Arabia. A busy town whose economy is closely tied to the sea, it has long been an important trading center given its proximity to Yemen and a major seaport with a thriving fishing industry. It is now six o'clock in the morning on a typical day in April. The town is coming to life with fishing boats returning to sell their catches and the markets and streets are being cleaned up after a busy evening of trading. If we turn our backs on these land-based activities and look out to the sea, the falling tide uncovers the comings and goings in another, natural world. At a first glance, the mudflats at Jizan look a bleak place, seemingly devoid of life. That impression could not be farther from the truth. This ecosystem is one of the most productive in the world. Thousands of invertebrates, such as worms, mollusks and crabs, inhabit every square meter of mud. This is the basis of a food chain that supports a community of water birds that will soon migrate vast distances to occupy breeding grounds stretching from East Africa to high Arctic Siberia. They are all drawn to this place by the abundance of food. Two migrant species of flamingos meet here, for the non-breeding season. The greater flamingo comes from breeding areas to the north of Iran and Turkey, whereas the lesser flamingo breeds to the south in the Rift Valley lakes of Kenya and Tanzania. They are most easily identified from one another by bill color. The greater has much pale pink in the bill, whereas the lesser is all black or very dark red. They both eat similar foods and are often seen feeding together, filtering microscopic organisms out of the muddy soup as they walk elegantly over the mudflats with their upturned heads. In contrast, at the other end of the size range is the ringed plover, a species which will soon migrate to breed in the high Arctic, perhaps five or six thousand kilometers away, along with the little stint. They will both return to Jizan in the autumn to spend the winter here, feasting on the copious invertebrate life in the rich mud. plover here still in its dull winter plumage is a slightly larger shorebird which prefers eating larger worms. It carefully extracts each one trying not to break them in the process. The bar-tailed godwit also feeds on worms but thanks to a much longer bill it can reach those deeper in the mud, inaccessible to the grey plover. Together they will leave for Arctic breeding grounds in May.
striking black and white shorebirds are crab plovers, and their name suggests that they are more interested in finding crabs and larger shellfish. They often stand immobile for long periods scanning the mudflats for prey movements. Once something is located, they will quickly rush after it. This sequence has been speeded up considerably. Large numbers of crab plovers are present during the winter at Jizan, but unlike most of the other shorebirds, they will only move a short distance within the Red Sea to breed on sandy islands, such as the nearby Farasau. The birds do not always have the mudflats to themselves. People in boats and children, perhaps also looking for crabs, do not seem to cause any interruption to the shorebirds' quest for food. Black kites seem to be much slower starters in the morning. At Jizan they are usually scavengers and use street lights as convenient perches to look for an easy meal. The slender billed gull, like the kites and other gulls, spend much of their time looking amongst rubbish on the mudflats or corniche for edible scraps. The curlew with its long curved bill is just about the largest shorebird on the mudflats. It can reach even deeper into the mud than the godwits to find its preferred prey. These birds are common breeders in the more temperate parts of Europe and Asia. As the tide ebbs and flows, new feeding areas become exposed while others are covered by water. The birds continually move between them. Several species of gulls are present around Jizan in winter. The slender-billed gulls will migrate to the East Mediterranean, Turkey or Iran, while black-headed gulls may go slightly further north to temperate Europe. The larger species, the lesser black-backed and herring gulls, may travel to northwest Europe and north Central Asia. Indeed, a lesser black-headed gull marked with a metal ring as a chick in Finland was discovered wintering in Jizan a few winters ago. The sooty gull stays in the Jizan area year-round, and like the crab plovers, it may nest on the Farasan Islands in the midsummer. By now you will have noticed that most of the migratory shorebirds are rather dull colored, but they show great diversity in the shape and size of their bills. This enables them to exploit the invertebrates living at different depths in the mud. It reduces competition between them and permits a diverse community to live in the same habitat. The range of thin, straight bills of different lengths is well illustrated by the little stint, the common sandpiper, redshank and bar-tailed godwit. Several species of terns can often be seen in Jizan. The gull-billed tern is a typical winter visitor. Terns mostly eat small fishes, which they can catch by plunge diving in shallow water, and although this one seems to be taking a drink, it uses the same swooping method to catch invertebrates on the mudflats.
As the day warms up, our black kite is now getting hungrier and is thinking about making a move. There must be food out there somewhere. The mudflats at Jizan extend about four kilometers from the port to the northern edge of the town. At low tide, they are at least 500 meters wide, and this relatively small surface area can sometimes support between 5,000 and 20,000 water birds. Both the bar-tail godwit and the grey plover here have already acquired their new summer plumage. The godwit now has beautiful red-brown underparts and the plover has a striking black face, breast and belly pack. They will soon depart for Russian Arctic breeding grounds once they have stored enough fat to fuel this incredible flight. These much brighter summer plumages serve two purposes. Firstly, on arrival on the tundra, they will be displayed to help them attract a mate. Secondly, it will camouflage them against predators while they sit on eggs through the incubation period. Returning closer to the port, high tide is approaching and it is time for the fish-eating birds to become more active. But for many shorebirds, it is nearly time to rest and wait for the next low tide. Fish-eaters include the resident pink-backed pelicans and the western reef herons. They often use old cable drums and wrecked boats as roost sites. Even as the mudflats become submerged, the flamingos can continue to feed by totally immersing their heads underwater. Smaller birds, including this summer plumaged turnstone, have to switch activities. The brownish colour on the wings of this crab plover indicates it is a young bird.
In this hot, humid and muddy environment, feathers need to be kept in good condition by regular bathing and preening. Reef herons dart about in deepening water trying to catch small fish. They are an unusual species as they exhibit plumage dimorphism and can either be pure white or dark grey in colour. Who knows how this little stint lost its leg? Such handicaps are not uncommon in shorebirds, and the birds involved seem to cope by hopping around the mudflats instead of walking or running. Some of the smaller birds, including the common sandpiper, continue to feed along the advancing tide line. Food is still available among the weed and debris, and some will not quit until the last centimetre of shoreline is underwater. Maximizing feeding opportunities to lay down large fat reserves is crucial as the time for northward migration approaches. Reef herons commence nesting from late April onwards. The paler areas on the lower legs, feet and face of this bird have changed to a bright red color, indicating it is ready to display and mate. Although the Kentish plover may not be going far, as many breed along the shores of the Red Sea, it is another species that will feed right up to the high tide. Although superficially similar to the ringed plover, its black collar does not extend across the breast. This group of turnstones includes birds in both summer and winter plumages. The latter may include some young ones that may spend their first full summer here in the Red Sea. The brighter summer plumaged birds will soon be ready to leave. Turnstones acquired their name from this characteristic behavior where they flick stones out of the way with their bills to expose the invertebrates sheltering underneath.
Towards the end of the day, as the sun goes down on the western horizon, most birds stop feeding and begin to look for a suitable place to roost. Nevertheless, a few individuals take advantage of the last glimmers of light to get one last bite before nightfall. As the human population grows and city limits continue to expand, the future is not so secure for the migratory and resident water birds that rely on the mudflats. Populations have declined over the last five years as more and more feeding and roosting sites have been reclaimed from the sea, infilled and developed into residential areas. It is now time for the town planners and environmental agencies such as the National Commission for Wildlife Conservation and Development to carefully control future development. Only this will ensure that both the human and bird communities can continue to live side by side in Jizan in relative harmony.